Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you what's new in GIMP 2.10.36. <laughs> Because the GIMP community is going all in on GIMP 3.0, pretty much all the new 2.10 versions coming out are going to have very limited features, a couple bug fixes here and there, and some backporting of items, meaning items that are made for GIMP 3.0, just making it into GIMP 2.10 in the meantime. So the first new feature I'll discuss is that GIMP now supports ACB and ASE files. So ACB stands for Adobe Color Book, ASE stands for Adobe Swatch Exchange. As you can tell by their names, both of these items have to do with exporting and importing palettes that come from Adobe. ASE, Adobe Swatch Exchange, is going to be created from places like Photoshop or Illustrator. So let's say you're working in one of these two programs or a client of yours is or just another designer you're working with and they want you to use a swatch from Adobe in a composition and so you need to bring it into GIMP. They could export the swatch they want you to use. So let's just come over here, right click, go to export swatches for exchange. So navigating to the folder where I want to save this, you'll see it says right here, save as type swatches.ase, and then you can name your swatch. I've already saved this, so I'm not going to save it again. But now I can come back over to GIMP and go to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and come over here to Palettes. So here you can see a list of palettes I've imported in here or that come with GIMP by default. So if I go to the top right here and then go to Palettes Menu, we can go to import palette and come over here to palette file. Click on the little folder icon, navigate to the folder we want to use. So here is that pastels color swatch here or color palette. So just double click on that to open it up. You can see a preview of it here and you can rename the palette inside of GIMP if you want a different name for this. I'm just going to hit import. And I've already done this before, so you can see now I've got two instances of this. But if I double click on here, there is the palette we imported. I will say, as cool as that is, the palette colors don't totally match up. So if I were to double click on this and just review the HTML notation, FFB, CBC, and then come over to Photoshop. So I believe this is the lightest one here. Let's open that up so as you can see the HTML notations are slightly different so GIMP is not actually bringing this in as a super accurate color at least not in Photoshop's case in my testing it does work a little better for Illustrator I'm not sure if that problem is on GIMP's end or if it's because GIMP is only RGB whereas Photoshop does CMYK maybe it's something I'm doing wrong if it is let me know in the comments so as I said, the colors are more accurate coming out of Illustrator in my testing. And then ACB, Adobe Color Book, from what I understand, has to do with Pantone colors, and that's mostly having to do with printing. So GIMP now supports importing ACB files the same way I just did ASE. GIMP 2.10.36 now introduces a brand new gradient mode. So let me just come over here, create a new layer, and I'll click OK, Shift click to bring that to the very top of the layer stacking order. If I hit the G key on my keyboard, that's going to grab the gradient tool. And down here inside the tool options, I can click on the box labeled gradient. So if I hover down here, you'll see we have a brand new mode. It's going to be foreground to transparent hard edge. So we've had foreground to transparent for forever. And we have, of course, the foreground to background hard edge. Now you've got foreground to transparency hard edge. So when that option is selected and we go with the gradient shape, for example, of spiral clockwise, and I'll click and drag my mouse, you can see we have the potential to create some really cool effects with this. And what's happening is one of the colors in the gradient is your foreground color, and then the other color is just going to be straight up transparency so you can see through that area. And then it just repeats itself on and on. And of course, you can adjust it here using the on canvas gradient settings. So I'll hit the escape key to get out of there. The next new feature is a minor UI improvement. And that is that when I hover over these little lock icons, you're going to see I now get this little white outline. So just a little bit more feedback there for the user to let them know, hey, there's something you can do here. You can click on these to lock them. 
And the other new feature is that when you do lock them, you now get this little padlock icon. So I think even though this is a minor new feature, this is definitely very welcome and just helps GIMP have an improved UI. A lot of people out there are complaining about GIMP's UI. So even if they are little minor improvements, they are very much needed. Another new feature in this latest version of GIMP is that the table of contents page of the GIMP help manual is now linked from the help menu. So if I go to help, user manual, table of contents, it's going to open up this little browser window and it should open up the table of contents page. In my experience with this, it takes some time to load. It will just load the image first and then it's gonna load up all the links here, but it can take 30 seconds or more for that to load, so pretty slow. Not really a groundbreaking feature that's gonna get you super pumped about this latest version of GIMP, but it's just another way to try to find help here. Honestly, just use your web browser if you're gonna look for help inside the GIMP manual. It's a lot faster. This takes a really long time to load. I don't really know why they even have this built directly into GIMP. Seems like they could just link directly to the web from the help menu here, but maybe there's some people that this works a little bit better for, so who am I to judge? All right, so let's exit out of here. The next new feature in GIMP 2.10.36 is that GIMP can now open GIFs that are not square GIFs. In asking GIMP's developers the significance of this feature, the response I received was that GIFs can contain non-square grids, and GIMP didn't support that before, so if a GIF didn't have a square grid, GIMP would import it as a square grid, and it would cause the GIF image to get squished. So if I go to View, Show Grid, and let me zoom in here. It's a big image, so it's kind of hard to see the grid. You can faintly see the grid here. This is a square grid. You can see it better if I hide the image there. So some GIFs have rectangular grids, and this just fixes that problem of GIMP not properly displaying certain GIFs. Some other items that were addressed with this latest release, there were a few security vulnerabilities that were fixed as reported by Zero Day Initiative. So if you haven't updated to GIMP 2.10.36, I recommend you do so just for security purposes. They've also fixed an issue caused by using a tablet in GIMP on Linux computers. And finally, they fixed a bug with the text tool. So let me grab the text tool real quick. Just type test. So I don't know the exact use case here. I had to get some clarification on Twitter or X, but I guess when you replace the text that's in here or you delete the text and start over or something, this would change to standard for some reason. But because there's a font inside of GIMP that's already called standard, it was causing the text inside the text box to change to that font and it was really annoying people, so they fixed that bug for this latest version. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out my website for more tutorials or enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.